If one brand comes to mind when we think about dedication to the craft of developing mountain bikes to win races, it's Yeti Cycles. Since the inception of our beloved sport, Yeti has pioneered countless designs and innovations for their factory racers with the simple goal of being the fastest. A simple jot down memory lane sees names like Missy Giovi, Miles Rockwell, John Tomac, Aaron Gwynn, and most recently Richie Rood all piloting their Yeti bikes to championships. Well, now the legacy continues. As one of the few brands that has yet to dive into the e-bike market, it should come as no surprise that Yeti has not been sitting with idle hands behind closed doors. Always driven by the pursuit of winning races at the highest level, Yeti has introduced their all-new 160E e-mountain bike along with their all-new e-specific Sixfinity suspension design. Aimed at maximizing the added power, weight, and demands of an e-bike, the 160E is set to challenge our preconceived notions of how an e-bike should handle and track. Some might consider Yeti being off the back with the debut of their first e-mountain bike coming in 2021. However, Yeti spent the last six years developing the 160E. This long period of development gave Yeti the freedom to observe and choose specific qualities and technologies they wanted to include on the 160E. One of the biggest challenges Yeti had when developing the 160E was how to package the suspension linkage around the assist motor. And in doing this, making sure that the kinematics and geometry was maintained and built around 160 millimeters of rear wheel travel, as well as a 29 inch rear wheel. Working within these constraints is what led Yeti to the development of their e-exclusive Sixfinity suspension platform. Sixfinity uses a six bar linkage design with a lower link that switches directions as the suspension progresses through its travel. The motion of this lower link is very similar to the motion of Yeti's Switch Infinity technology found on their other bikes. The six bar design allows Yeti to fine tune the wheel path for specific anti-squat and anti-rise values intended to complement the additional speed and weight from the motor and battery. The layout also provides a stiff and supportive chassis to manage the overall mass of the 160E. The magic of the Sixfinity design is definitely the lower switch link. As the suspension progresses through its travel, the switch link first rotates upward until it reaches an inflection point. Once past this point, the link switches directions and rotates downward until bottom out. During the initial upward rotation of the switch link, the 160E maintains a high anti-squat value for a smooth and supported pedaling platform. Once the link reaches its inflection point and begins rotating downward, anti-squat drops off in a progressive nature. This allows the suspension to be active and free from chain forces once deeper in the travel when you are typically not pedaling. Yeti intentionally lowered the anti-squat on the 160E because pedaling efficiency is not as important when you have the assistance of a motor. The added acceleration and pedaling speeds riders experience when seated on an e-bike warrant a more active suspension for improved traction. With traditional acoustic bikes, most riders spend time pedaling in their largest gears. With an e-bike, a greater range of gears are used when seated and pedaling. With only a 9% change in anti-squat across the entire cassette range at SAG, the suspension remains consistent and supported regardless of gear choice. Lastly, Sixfinity maintains a high anti-squat value across a wider range of wheel travel as opposed to just at a single sag point. The idea here is that riders rarely remain at sag when pedaling, so anti-squat is better optimized around a broader range of travel for an efficient pedaling platform. So with Yeti lowering the anti-squat values uh, really across you know, the whole, whole cassette as well as maintaining it throughout the whole wheel travel, the bike maintains great traction and it's super consistent when you're seated. It doesn't change depending on being in an easy pedaling gear versus a harder. I think that's a really good point because as anybody who's ridden an e-bike knows, you spend a lot more time in the middle part of the cassette. With the anti-squat being a little bit lower than I would say like acoustic bikes we typically ride as well as other e-bikes that are out there, the 16E does have a little bit more pedal bob that kind of lost efficiency is made up for though with the you know, assist of a motor. I don't think it's something that is so much so that it's a negative when you're pedaling. I would rather have more traction because I'm gonna make up for it with the assistance of the motor. To help manage the added weight of the 160E, Yeti did tune anti-rise to only 65% at SAG. This is a lower magnitude compared to their acoustic mountain bikes, but the goal here was to achieve a balance between traction and consistent geometry while under braking. Anti-rise also remains constant across the entire travel range, only deviating by 8%. This was done to create a predictable and consistent bike that handles similarly throughout travel. 
This is what definitely helped provide a very stable platform and made it super easy to manage the 50 pound weight of the 160E as well as kind of change directions when we wanted to. The Sixfinity suspension design also allows the leverage rate progression of the 160E to be altered without affecting geometry, anti-squat, or anti-rise. By changing the position of a flip chip found at the lower shock mount, riders can choose between three leverage rate settings to fine tune shock performance. The only change this adjustment does cause is a two millimeter difference in travel between each setting. Yeti ships the 160E in the neutral 30% position that they say offers the most balanced ride. We have tested the 160E in both the stock 30% progression rate as well as the more plush and poppy 35%. In the stock 30% setting, the bike definitely has a much more balanced character to it. You definitely maintain a more mid-travel support. You're not going through the suspension travel as quickly. In the 35% progression rate, it's definitely a bit more of a forgiving kind of plush platform. This was great for when we rode really rough, kind of rocky, steep terrain. Kind of took the little bit of edge off of bigger impacts uh, when compared to say the 30% stock setting definitely helped liven up this bike to counter the extra weight of an e-bike. Yeti chose to equip the 160E with Shimano's newest EP8 motor system. Released earlier this year, the EP8 motor is smaller, lighter, and more powerful than its predecessor, offering 85 Newton meters of smoothly delivered torque. Updated motor internals help reduce overall drag, while motor lag, once you stop pedaling, has been improved for a quicker cutout time than before. Shimano also shaved five millimeters off the height of the EP8 motor for better ground clearance, and the 160E is spec with stout 160 millimeter cranks to limit ground strikes. Our favorite update of the new EP8 system is the ability to turn on the system while having pressure on the pedals. Anybody who rode Shimano's previous Steps 8000 system is well aware that every time you try to turn on the bike and you do have your feet on the pedals, it's gonna shoot you an error code and you're gonna have to wait for it to start over. The quicker motor cutout of the EP8 system was also a nice improvement. This was super helpful for pedaling when you are descending and not coming to sections with too much speed. It definitely was sort of a phenomenon that we would experience with the previous Steps 8000 system. So the 160E is using Shimano's 630 watt hour battery that is semi-integrated into the frame and removable via a four million Allen key from the bottom. We have found that on a full charge, we've been able to get about 100 miles on eco mode, around 55 on trail, and somewhere around 35 on boost. Two rider profiles can be created for the EP8 motor with power output, support level, and sensitivity all adjusted individually for eco, trail, and boost modes. Riders can then toggle between the two profiles via the onboard display. Within the app, riders can also perform system updates, check battery health, and configure onboard display modes. So we honestly have not used the two rider profile feature very much via Shimano's app. The stock setting that it comes with provides a nice level of support for each mode. I would say that the one benefit we have found is on days where you're more fatigued or maybe you've ridden a lot the past few days, we have our second rider profile set up to provide more assistance for each setting. This is great for kind of managing your output, being able to still get out and go for a ride, but at the same time, not overexert yourself. Moving on to frame details, the 160E is an impressively thought out machine. Beginning with the carbon frame, Yeti chose to use their Turk carbon layup. This is the more expensive of the two options they do offer and basically provides a lighter frame as well as one that balances out stiffness as well as compliance. Throughout the linkage, floating collet axles as well as pivot pinch bolts are used to extend bearing life and ensure proper tolerances. All cables are routed internally and run along a tray between the battery and frame before entering the rear swing arm, which is tube and tube guided. At the entrance and exit of internal routing holes can be found modular cable ports that clamp shifter housing, brake lines, and display wires securely in place. Riders who choose to run wireless components can swap out the cable ports for plugs with only rear brake line holes. Chain slap is managed by a ribbed chain stay protector as well as a molded seat stay protector. Yeti's efforts to silence any noise on the 160E is impressive to say the least, and they even have a one-up chain guide that has a nice guide for the derailleur cable to run through Again, limiting noise or getting uh, involved with anything with the chain. Unfortunately, all of Yeti's efforts to make the 160E as silent as possible has been tarnished by the EP8 motor and its loud knocking noise. This is most apparent when there isn't uh, too much pressure on the pedals. 
as in descending or even just cruising on more flatter sections of trail where there's a good amount of like small bump chatter coming through. Other frame details include an uninterrupted seat tube allowing for long travel dropper compatibility. On the back of the seat tube can be found a nifty mud fender to keep debris from wedging itself between the frame and switch link. For sizes medium through extra large, a standard water bottle will fit on the 160E, while size small can accommodate Yeti's hot lap bottle. At the rear of the 160E, Yeti chose to use SRAM's UDH derailleur hanger. We are stoked to see another brand new bike come spec with the universal hanger, which should make replacement simpler for those without a local Yeti dealer. Lastly, there's a shock drain hole found below the lower shock eyelet for water to drain out. Across all sizes, the head tube angle is 64 and a half degrees, effective seat angle is 78 degrees, and chainstay length is 446 millimeters. The bottom bracket height was designed to be intentionally higher, coming in at 350 millimeters. This was done by Yeti to help counter the extra weight and low hung motor on the 160E. Lastly, there are no geometry adjustments to be found. The 160E is launching with two build kit options to choose from, as well as two colorways. Both build kit options are built around the same Turk series carbon frame, and both feature the same Sixfinity suspension platform, as well as Shimano's EP8 motor. The C1 Turk series kit is the least expensive 160E option and retails for 10,100 US dollars. So we tested the most expensive T1 build kit, which retails for 12,700 US dollars. The T1 build kit is highlighted by an E-tuned Fox 38 factory grip two fork, Fox factory float X2 shock, DT Swiss E1700 wheels, Shimano XT drivetrain, Shimano XTR cranks, SRAM code RSC brakes, RockShock Axis reverb dropper, a Maxxis Askai tire up front, as well as a Maxxis DHR2 in the rear, and a one-up chain guide. So as if designing a new e-bike as well as all new suspension platform wasn't already enough, Yeti also is debuting their own carbon e-specific handlebar. The handlebar uses thermoplastic carbon fiber molding techniques and features internal routing to connect the assist switch to the display for added cockpit simplicity. Stock width comes oh, yeah. in at 800 millimeters with a weight of 250 grams and all material sourcing and manufacturing of the handlebar is conducted entirely in the United States. So the 160E is hands down the most capable full-size e-bike we have ever ridden once pointed downhill. I don't think that we could find terrain gnarly enough to really like overpower the abilities of the Sixfinity suspension design or to do anything to really make it feel unsettled. We tested the size large, which has a 480 millimeter reach, which is definitely on the roomier side, but not so much so that we felt like we were stretched out over the bike. In general, we definitely always felt like our rider weight was sat nicely into the bike. This helped keep us nice and planted for an improved like stability as well as control. It gave us a nice position to kind of move within the bike for ease of cornering or changing lines. The 446 millimeter chain stays or plenty long enough to maximize stability at speed, but we were more surprised by how snappy the 160E still remain, especially when riding like jumpy flow trails. Oh, There's yeah. plenty of times where we forgot about how much bike we were piloting down the trail because of the fun we were having. So coming in at 50 pounds, the 160E is still a lot of bike to manage. It's by no means heavy for a full-size e-bike. That is part of the reason that we chose to ride the bike in the 35% progression rate by having the bike set up being a little bit more forgiving as well as poppy made it much easier to maneuver, select line choice, and also just kind of created like a more playful manner in the bike uh, in general descending. So how does it climb? It's an e-bike and you have all this motor assist, but at the end of the day, you still have to spin the cranks to get to the top of the hill. We found that having a, a fairly steep 78 degree seat tube angle, effective seat tube angle, did wonders for keeping our body position nice and forward over the 160E when pedaling. We never ran into any issues with the front wheel starting to kind of lift on real steep inclines. And overall, the assist of Shimano's EP8 system provides more than enough power to take you to the top of basically any climb. Usually the deciding factor on a climb would be our abilities to pick good lines or keep our cadence up before the motor wasn't up to the task of laying down enough power or torque. The power leads in nice and smooth and really kept the bike from feeling twitchy in technical sections. And then lastly, just the range of the 630 watt hour battery is phenomenal. 
You know, there are, of course, larger batteries out there, but they will come with a higher weight penalty. We feel that Yeti's choice for the battery size that they did choose was a good call. It kept the weight of the 160E manageable, but still gives riders a full-size e-bike capable of covering a ton of ground. Part spec wise, Yeti did an astounding job with the T1 build kit with really no weaknesses to pinpoint. The Fox factory suspension with a E-tuned Fox 38 front, as well as Yeti's own in-house tuned X2 were clear standouts. They were incredibly supple as well as stable and really helped enhance the descending performance of the 160E. And then the other standout component was DT Swiss's EX1700 wheels. They should be showing way more signs of wear after the abuse we've put them through, but they've been continually impressing us throughout our testing. They've held up with no dents and no wobbles to show. We are going to nitpick our 160E build kit. The only thing that we might opt for is a larger 220 millimeter rear rotor. Another small downside with the T1 build kit is having a Shimano XT shifter as well as using code RSC brakes. When both of these are mounted on the handlebar, it does create some mounting conflicts. We ended up having to run our XT shifter a bit more inboard on the handlebar. Otherwise, it would interfere with our thumb and be uncomfortable. So what's the bottom line on Yeti's all new 160E? Yeti's first go in an e-bike is impressive to say the least. Another perfect example of Yeti leaning on their racing roots to develop a winning bike for us average riders to enjoy. Their all new Sixfinity suspension design boasts incredible stability descending while traction climbing is prioritized. With extensively tuned anti-squat and anti-rise values, the 160E truly works in unison with its heavier weight. The updates to Shimano's EP8 motor system provides gradual power at the pedals, while the larger battery capacity allows for longer adventures to be achieved or just one more lap to be banged out. With a part spec that is right on par for any abuse you can put the 160E through, the only question riders need to consider is, do your trails warrant the need for a long travel, race-ready e-bike? The answer is yes. <laughs> Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And for more information on Yeti's new 160E, you can head to vitalintv.com for the full review. Good. Yeti's... Dude, it's crazy. Bike's crazy.